What's up everyone? Eddie Martinez here with the Recording Connection and welcome to your additional supplemental video for lesson number 17. Now you're going to be learning all about syncing and automation in Pro Tools using video. So I want you to go ahead and fire up your Pro Tools and we'll get started. Alright guys, so hopefully you have your Pro Tools session brought up. Now if you don't have a Pro Tools session brought up, don't worry about it. All you need to do is go ahead and take plenty of notes and apply this information as soon as you get the chance. Now what we're going to be learning is how to import video into Pro Tools so that you can work with the audio, add audio, and, and do a lot of fun stuff like that. Now just uh, as a precursor so you guys know, uh, Pro Tools is not a video editing program, so you're not going to really be able to edit any of the video whatsoever. You might be able to trim a little bit from one end and the other end, but that's about it. You're not going to be able to add you know, transitions or anything fun like that or video edits. This is solely going to be for adding audio, taking that audio or affecting that audio in some way. Uh, so let's go ahead and learn how to do this. All you need to do is go over to File, go to Import, go down to Video, or you could use a hot key command, which is going to be a Control option or alt uh, shift I and then select your video uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and select this now what's also really cool about uh, Pro Tools it also allows you to go ahead and preview uh, whatever you know video you're gonna bring in or audio that you're gonna bring in so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play so we know that we're bringing in the right video cool. yeah that's the video I want to bring in so let me go ahead and hit open and select the area where I want to place this video and at the session start is fine fine with me keeping the audio is also good for me so let me go ahead and hit OK and then it's going to bring in uh, not only just the uh, video itself but also it's going to ask me where, to, where would I like to save this video to so let's go ahead and hit OK now here's uh, right here is the the video and then right here is saying, hey, where would, you like to, where would you like to go ahead and place this video? So I'm going to go ahead and place it to video session, which is the name of this project file. Go down to my video files and uh, open it there. It's saving it to uh, the disk and we're pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to resize this window right here, which is the video, okay? And place it in an area where I could see not only the track information, but also the video as well. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Okay, that's cool enough. And uh, now what we see right here is we have this first track or, or this first lane right here with all uh, the video information so we can kind of see like our thumbnails and know exactly, you know, where, where, what part of the song we're looking at. And right below we have the, the, the track information, the audio information for the video. Okay, so it's separated in two tracks, and you're going to be able to do everything that you want uh, with this. You know, obviously, if you have your tools selected, uh, you're going to be able to, you know, trim it, or you're going to be able to move it around, you know, whatever you really want to do, or you could even add effects to it, like you could EQ it a little bit. It really depends on, you know, what you want to do with this uh, audio information. Again, you're not really going to be able to do too much with this video information, uh, so it's mostly going to be about, you know, adding additional tracks or, you know, scoring stuff or, you know, overdubbing, you know, some things, stuff like that, okay? So let's go ahead and take a quick listen to the song. And um, what I did is I went ahead and added an explosion sound effect to an area in the song that has an explosion that doesn't actually have an explosion sound effect to it. So first I'm going to go ahead and mute it, and then I'm going to go ahead and unmute it so we can see exactly what what's capable in Pro Tools. So I'll, I'll hit play. <laughs> So if you notice there was no explosion, uh, I'll play it back one more time and then add the explosion. So no explosion uh, sound effect. Let's go ahead and hit uh, mute to unmute it and listen to it one more time. Uh, so, you know, doing things like that, act, adding like little extra elements to songs or to, uh, you know, whatever piece of video that you're bringing in actually raises the production value. Uh, it makes it seem a little bit cooler in, in most cases uh, and, um, you know, kind of gives it the, the finishing touches that it, it might need. Uh, so now another thing that you might notice is how uh, this right here looks a little bit different. You know, uh, the transport window looks a little bit different with the information. Now, what it's under right now is something called time code. Uh, now, what time code is? It's actually the pretty much just like the language uh, for uh, for timing for video. 
Okay, so usually for, for audio, it's like bars and beats and stuff like that. When you're working with video, you usually want to either use minutes and seconds, but really what you want to use is time code, usually because there's a lot of, you know, different elements that you're going to be bringing in, and um, it's just kind of like the international language for video. Everybody's going to be using uh, time code, and that's what you really need to know about that. That's what's really important about uh, using time code is just that it's pretty much used on most editing video software, if, if that makes sense. Okay, uh, so you usually want to keep it there. If it's going to be shorter, you might want to go ahead and uh, do you know, minutes, minutes and seconds. Sometimes if you're doing something where you're syncing audio to a uh, video and you want to go ahead and have things happen you know, to the beat of the music, you might want to keep it on bars and beats, but uh, for the most part, uh, time codes where you want to be at. Okay. All right. So um, now the next thing you want to know is how to bounce this out. All you need to do is uh, do what you would normally do. I uh, go down to File, Bounce to. You'd bounce either to disk or to uh, QuickTime Movie. Uh, if you bounce to disk, it's going to give you some different options over here. Okay. Uh, it's going to ask you, you know what you know what type file type do you want. If you want it to be video, you're going to go ahead and select QuickTime Video. And then right here uh, you have different options for the sound, okay? I usually leave it at, at its default, uh, different options for your bit depth, okay? And I'll usually try to raise it to the highest uh, bit depth that is possible. Sample rate, I'll do the same, you know, if I wanted a higher uh, sampling rate. And a lot of times, you know, if it's just a little uh, small project, I'll just keep it under 44.1 uh, kilohertz. Keep it right there. And uh, convert after bounce is usually a, a option that I like to choose. Uh, sometimes I like to add it straight to my iTunes if, I, if I'm keeping this video for myself, uh, but if I'm not, if I'm just, you know, sharing this with, uh, let's say, YouTube or with a coworker or something like that, I'll just go ahead and hit bounce and then just, you know, bounce it out to my desktop and then send it to wh wherever it needs to go, if it's YouTube or into an email to send out to uh, another coworker that might need this information. Okay, so that is using video and Pro Tools. So hopefully, hopefully you guys took plenty of notes, you find this useful, and of course I'll catch you guys on the next video. All right guys, that's all the information that I have for you today, but of course it's up to you to put this knowledge to use. Now don't forget to jump back into your Recording Connection workbook and just double check to see if you have any mandatory supplemental reading assignments to turn in for this week. Now if you feel shaky on any of this material, what you need to do is go back into your provided textbook and reread that material. Just remember that these videos are only a supplement to your education. Okay. Now if you're watching this video online and you want to know more about the recording process uh, and you want to learn how to become a recording engineer in just six months, what you need to do is you need to check out the recordingconnection.com or call the provided number. Our staff is actually going to set you up with an engineer in your town or in a town near you. We have tons of locations all across the U.S. and parts of Canada, and we're actually really proud to say that we have more than a 72% hiring success rate thanks to our student advisor that comes with your enrollment. So hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later.